Welcome back to Lunch of the Market. Yesterday was killer as the markets rallied hard into the close to finish on the highs of the day. The bad was hobnobbing with Phil Perlman, Howard Lindsay, Alpha Trends, Tickerville, Kevin Hughes, m and Player, Heather McRae, Finance Trends, Yo-Yo Trader, Pit Trader 1988, Todd Sullivan, and CME Group. No wonder there were more people in the room, and even though Brad is a talkative guy, it's impossible to have in-depth conversations with nearly 60 people in only a couple of hours. I wanted to thank CME Group for hosting the conference with StockTwits. We're looking forward to another great day today. The conference is back on today for the final session at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time and 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. One of the key points that came out of the conference was a conversation that Brad had with Reggie Horner. She's a Forex trader, and that's just fancy Wall Street speak for currency trader. We were talking about holding what Forex traders call exotics, currencies of countries like Turkey, Iraq, and other emerging markets. She said in terms of putting a trade on, the biggest factor was not so much your thesis for why or why not you believe the trade would work out, but whether or not you had risk had to risk capital to do it. We disclosed that less than 1% of our capital was in currencies, and if we saw it disappear 100%, then the loss would never show up. Upon hearing this, she said that we had to place the bet. With that kind of risk capital, where it will not even make a dent in our performance, we need to put the trade on because we could afford to do it. I think this lesson applies to all trading, not just currency or forex trading. If you have a good idea and you can afford the loss of the trade going against you, then you can ignore almost anything else. What you will learn from putting on the trade is more valuable than your profit or loss you make, loss you take. What's our lesson for that's our lesson for today? Managing risk. It's a tagline you hear from mutual fund companies and commercialists for online brokers, but no one ever defines it for you. Managing risk means not putting on a trade that's bigger than you're really comfortable with. For instance, when we're looking at what to do with our BP holding, we have a sizable position in BP, but not bigger than 10% of our capital. But still, 10% is a big position. We also have a position in Banco Santander with the un- unforgettable symbol STD. But our STD position is dwarfed by BP because of the discrepancy in share prices. BP trades at around $37.50 and STD hangs around about $10. It takes nearly four times the available capital to hold a round lot, fancy talk for 100 shares, of BP as it does for Banco Santander. We can own nearly 400 shares of STD for every 100 shares of BP. Since we initiate a position and then accumulate as the stock slides down, it's much easier to accumulate STD without ma- taking on more risk than we're comfortable as opposed to something like BP or Monsanto, MON, or any other of the commodity plays. We'll throw out BHP, X, MOS, FCX. The high beta commodity plays really should only be used with options. It may, may take a bite out of your profit to be hedged with options, but you, you'll spend hundreds to protect thousands. It comes down to knowing what you own, being comfortable with that, and reading through the balance sheets of the companies you own and looking for solid dividend plays. Right now, in this environment, you want to make sure you don't own anything that you're not comfortable with. It may hurt to take that loss, but you should do it anyway. Keeping yourself up at night because you own something you really don't want isn't a good way to make money. It's also not a good way to prolong your life. When you finally cut bait with the big loser, spend some time thinking about what attracted you to it in the first place and try to steer clear of similar situations in the future. You'll be happy you did so, and so will your bottom line. Thanks for joining us today, and don't forget, we'll have some more from the StockTwits conference tomorrow or Monday, depending on how travel goes. For yesterday's lunch at the market, you're going to want to check our MOF radio station right on the magnumopusfinancial.com homepage, right there in the gray boxes that make up the MOF news network. Anytime we don't do a video, we usually resort to doing the show with old-fashioned radio. Brad's call yesterday to pick up Ford under $12 meant you could have been up a quick 50 cents and been out at the open this morning for nearly 10% profit. If you missed it, we'll say it again. Grab some Ford under $12 here as Alan Mulally was on CNBC this morning talking about changes they're making to the cockpit in the Ford, and you're going to be impressed with Ford going forward. They clearly are making ste- taking steps to become a market leader. Okay, enough from us for today, and we hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to manage your risk, cut your losers, and don't find new reasons to own them. And we'll see you tomorrow.